All right. All right, hey, how's it going? I'm gonna draw some uh, faces today. Uh, somebody at work suggested that I should uh, do a little tutorial on faces. Let's see if this light looks better. Hmm, it's a little better. Yeah, drawing faces is not easy, and that's fine. And I'm gonna draw my uh, my character that I that I'm, on my personal comic book that I'm working on. His name is Vincent 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 Verdusco, and I'm gonna. Mm, he wanted me to focus kind of like on facial expressions, which is a problem that he was having. And that's okay. I mean, the facial expressions aren't easy by any stretch of the imagination. Um, and that's okay. We're going we're gonna to work on that, and we're going to see if we can't maybe give a little guidance to an easier way to do it. Now, I don't want to harp on anime, but anime is a, a very simplified version of drawing. Again, most anime. A very simplified version of doing a face. So, because they're, they're so... Because the expressions are so succinct, I'm going to go ahead and use an anime character to sort of establish how. So, um, one of my favorite animes when I was growing up was Dragon Ball Z. And one of my favorite characters was the character Mr. Piccolo. So I'm gonna start with him, and I'm gonna start how I always start, and I always start with a, uh, just drawing the round uh, skull cap. And then, um, I believe Piccolo has a really long face, so I'm gonna bring sides of his face down, down. Okay, so sort of about that. And, uh, okay. Now we're gonna draw a real generic front on, no expression face. So we use the same proportions that we always do. I do the center line and I do the, uh, the guide of going through half of the face because the entire face is gonna happen on the bottom part here. And up here is just, again, the head or hair. And on Mr. Piccolo, it's gonna be the antennas. Yeah, so this right here, I, I, would, I make this the brow line. And Piccolo has a real heavy brow. So we'll just do that. Again, we're not trying to make this look dynamic or anything. This is just a regular bland front on um, pose. Now he has a real slender nose. And I like to draw the entire outline of the nose. Even though when I ink it, I, I don't include these lines on the side. But just as a guideline, I like to draw the sides of the nose. And again, from about halfway and just about a half a tick up, that's where you want to end it. This is the point, the nostrils. Okay. And then the mouth. Now the general regular expressionless mouth would be, it looks like a really elongated M. Like that. So we're going to do that. Now, for men, this area here isn't so pronounced. It's more like, like that. For women, you can actually make the big dip in the M there. So, for Mr. Piccolo, and he's a very stoic character, angry, stern all the time. So, we're going to make his nasal labial trough a little longer. And we're going to go here and do the M there and we'll do the upper lip connect it and the bottom lip now for him he's an alien so we'll make his eyes eh, we'll make his eyes a little and then two small pupils okay now this is an expressionless face. Now again, when you're measuring out the distances between the chin and the bottom lip, between the eye and the, the outermost portion of the cheek, which would be right about here, the part of the cheek that protrudes the most. If you were to highlight it, that would be the lightest part there. When you're doing that, you really have to sit and think about the face that you're drawing for a while. This is not something you're gonna be able to knock out real quick. 
And the quicker you knock it out, the more unfinished it looks. Now there's a big indentation here, about that size, of the area of the cheek that goes in. And it always comes to the corner of the mouth, because if you were to look at a skull, that's where you have the big missing pieces, here and here. Now when you're drawing comics, you want to simplify all this stuff. You want to make it as simple as possible. You don't want to sit here and draw every tiny detail. You could, but you don't want to. So let's erase this. And we'll pretend this isn't Mr. Piccolo and it's just a regular average everyday Joe teen. So we'll take the, uh, the brow line, move it up. We'll get the eyes. They're sitting in the eye sockets, okay? And then we'll cover them up with skin. Okay, same with the nose. And the mouth can stay the same. Now, this area here, even though it's all dark, there's a line that goes to the corner of the mouth from the inside of the ear. This line here. And that's the line we want to hint at. We don't want to draw it real dark. We just want to hint at that line. So if we were to go straight into inking, which I'm going to do right now, I'm going to show you that it really isn't, um, it really isn't needed to go super high into detail when it comes to faces, especially I'm going to do a younger guy, a teen guy. So you really need to be real careful about where you put your lines and how many lines you do put. So, for this teen guy, let's go up here. And I want to give him some dreamy eyes. And for me, that means eyes that kind of dip out at the ends like this. Almost like sad eyes. Somebody just has naturally sad looking eyes. Like that. Okay. And another thing, you got to be careful with your shadows when you're drawing younger people. Because shadows uh, lend age and weight to the character. I always like to put this little shadow underneath the bottom lip and between the bottom lip and the chin to show the depth. Now, okay, here's a, uh, here's the eyebrow. Now, when I do the nose, I typically only shadow or I only draw the, the actual ink line on, let's say the light's coming from this direction, from here. So I would only do the shadow of the nose on this side, here, and then suggest the line there on the inside. And again, this point of the nose, only it always connects up to the side of the mouth. If he's smiling real big, this line will adjust to go to the end of the, the mouth at the smile. Oh my goodness. That's a loud airplane. So again, if I draw the chin, and I draw the side of the face here. Okay. Let's connect these. In order to do this area here, the, the thinner, the more athletic the face, the more this line's gonna show up. The younger, the more baby fat the face is, the less this line's gonna show up. So he's gonna be thin and athletic, however, he's a teenager, so I'm not gonna actually give him a very pronounced, that is it right there. That's all I'm gonna do, just that small line. We'll finish off with the ear. And then, you know, when we do his hair, he's gonna have a shade. You know, he's a teenager and he's, he got angst and he don't like cutting his hair and he thinks his hair is sexy and yada yada. So we'll give him a lot of hair.
Okay. So then we make, and again with the teenager, you got to make the neck a lot thinner than you would an average person to indicate that they're youthful. Okay, so that's how I would draw my teenager. So let's get rid of some of these guidelines so you can kind of see. Just like that. And then I always put in the eyes later because you can always, and because he's going to have a dead eye stare, he's looking straight at you. We'll just give him some of these. Now, expressions are different you have to really think about the skull. You have to think about all the things that the, the, the face is doing while it's making this expression. And expressions should be simple because we all have faces and we all have mirrors. We can make the face, look in the mirror, and just put down what we see. But that can be really hard if we don't have the basic foundations of the anatomy set up. And you have to have those. And you have to think about the skull when you draw. If you're just going to start to draw and you're, hmm, let me draw this and then I'm going to, hmm, like that and then, hmm, I hear, I hear, you know. It, it's going to look out of whack. It's not going to look at the world as we see it. <clears throat> so keeping that in mind, what? keeping that in mind, let's say we're going to do an angry face, a real angry face. There's certain things in the, on the face that are going to change. So, for instance, let me start off with the same character. I'm going to draw his skull we'll do a little okay kind of like how we were doing piccolo okay and i say i'm going to angle his face facing a little more to the ground so i'm going to put my guideline like this okay that's the brow line there when you do and this is how and then when you uh when the person's angry, they're scowling, they're, they're frustrated, they want to hurt somebody, the nose, because the, the mouth is going to, um, the mouth is going to widen out, the mouth is going to look like this, like, Arr. the nose follows suit, the nose has to get wider too. And you have to really stop and think about it because you will change the way your character looks if you're not careful. His nose is his nose, and it has to widen out. But you can't widen it out too much. He's going to look like a different character. So keep your character in mind. There. there. And just widen whatever his normal nose would be out. Then because he's leaning forward, the space between the bottom of his nose and his mouth is going to be really small. It's going to be only about that long. And that's his nasal labial trough right there. Then we're going to do the inside or the upper lip. Bring it down. He's frustrated. Now, when it comes to... I mean, remember, you have to think about everything you do when you're doing these faces. It's not something you're going to be able to knock out quick. You have to give it thought. So, giving this thought, I'm thinking about the skull. I'm thinking about where it comes down. Oh, this would be the upper mandible. And here would be the teeth. And then here would be the teeth for the bottom of the jaw. You know. So, if I'm going to do the indentation, it's going to be here and here. Because remember, when drawing comics, you do not want to draw individual teeth. Especially if you're doing drawing small. You're not doing a half size page of a face. If you're doing a drawing small, you're not showing the teeth, period. You're just showing the indentation and the shape of the whites of the teeth. Then, you have to, when you're thinking about the face, you, you have all these things you do have to think about. For instance, like I said, when the mouth widens out on the side, there's a line that connects here to here, always. And you don't want to put that line, usually, especially on a young boy. It's going to age him. It's going to make him look old. But you do need to hint at it. You need to make that little corner piece just shaped like it's going in that direction. Same is when the person's angry. Just like this. Again, this is still a young guy. He's just pissed. Now, when you're pissed and you're angry, your eyes get smaller. So we can't take his big doe eyes as normal, but they still need to be his eyes. So remember, we're, we're, we're thinking about the skull. So this is the, uh, the eye cavity. The eye would be about here. 
So you would only see, you wouldn't see the top part of the eye because he's leaning forward. So you would only see here, when, and especially when you're grimacing like this, your, the bottom eyelid comes up more than the, uh, because the top doesn't really move, it just, it just furls in the corners here. So it'll furl in the corner, be normal here. This top part won't move, we'll give him the sad eyes. And the bottom part comes up, so we'll give him a little reet on the bottom there. Okay, and then when you're angry like that, you're usually not angry just standing up straight, you're usually hunched forward. So instead of having the body here, and you know, what's gonna happen is he's more than likely gonna be hunched forward a little bit. Like that. Or if you, as you please, like that. He's angry. And the hairline is gonna sh shorten up too because everything's leaning forward. The hairline is going to be probably about right there. And the ears are going to be no longer right here, like this. They're going to be a little higher because he's leaning forward, so up here. So this is like when, you, when you're expressing things, you need to take everything into account, all of it. Because when you're inking your expressive face, let's get a little brush here, just to make it quick. When you're inking your expressive face, the shadows need to be, they need to correspond. So even though this is a young guy, it's going to be very dramatic. You are going to see this face and instantly you're going to say, this guy is going through something rough, I'm not trying to give him a hard time. I'm going to give him a wide berth and steer clear of whatever he's doing. Okay, and again, we don't want to give him too many lines on his face because that will age him. So we, and then again, because the, the lights, let's say here, the lights coming from this direction, we'll give the top of his hair highlight and the rest of the hair will be down here, 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 here. And then there's going to be heavy shadow under his hair covering and obscuring the face. Under the nose also, here, and real heavy under the chin. Okay? So there's your, um, well, let's get rid of these lines so you can see what I'm talking about. There's our teenager, and he's really angry that his, his girlfriend didn't add him as in a relationship on Facebook. And he's like, what the hell, bro? What are you doing to me? I thought you loved me. Okay. Now, let's say we want to do an expression of he's very um, inquisitive. He's interested in what's going on. So he's gonna, we're gonna do a three quarter shot. Let's get rid of this little head here. We're gonna do a three-quarter shot. And I like to do my heads, my, because I draw pretty quickly. I've been doing it for a while. I draw an oblong and I draw the mask of the face like this. And then I figure out the rest. And he's kind of like leaning it back and he's like, oh, this is interesting. And he has his hand up. And he's like, what? And he's like, hmm, interesting. So, okay. that's my gesture drawings. So, and this head is a little bit too big, but for the body, but for that, nah, we'll make it smaller. We'll make this right. We'll do it right, no matter what. Okay. Now, we have the basic shape of the head. Once we have that, we want to find out where our guideline is. Where is our line of action. And if he's inquisitive, he's going to be thinking about something straight ahead here, or is he going to be thinking about something down? Usually when somebody's inquisitive, or when they're interested in what is going on here, they're usually looking a little bit down. 
So we're going to change his head to be looking a little bit down. So, do the same skull cap here. There you go. Hmm. There we go. That's the mask. That's the mask that I want to do. All right. Now, hmm. We'll do it here. We'll do the. We'll do it like this. Mm hmm. He's looking at something and he says, "That's very interesting." So, when we're doing this this way. We still can't rush through it. You saw me rush through my, my gesture drawing there, just to get the eye, the, where, just to place him in the scene. So just to place him in the scene. But now that I have him where I want him, it's time to slow down and really pay attention. So I want him to be paying attention to something probably about right here, a dish. A dish with some, uh, I don't know, a turkey and a turkey leg. And a bullet casing. It's empty. Oh, and it's still smoking. All right. So he's like, hmm. So, again, we're going to do the same thing with the furled brows, like we did over here. But we're going to make the eyes squint, almost like a Sherlock Holmes. So he has a furled brow, and then his eyes are going to squint. Hmm. You're barely going to see him open. You're just going to see dark lines. Hmm. Interesting. And then his nose, which has always been a little bit more on the Anglo side, will be a little more slender. I don't, and we'll keep the same, again, we're still working with our same guidelines. They're just now, instead of being here, 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 they're going to be tilted here, 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 over here. So they're going to be tilted here, here. So now his nose, you're going to see it from a three-quarter profile, a little bit nostril, hmm. and then out. what does your mouth do when you're inquisitive? Now, if you're going to sit there and, and think about it for a while, you're doing the wrong thing. You just, just take a look at yourself in the mirror. Get your phone, turn it off so it's all black screen, and look at yourself and make an inquisitive face. I know when I make an inquisitive face, my lips purse. They come together. So, we'll do the same thing for him. And again, we gotta be a little careful. Let's get a little closer here so we can see. And we'll erase some of these erroneous lines so we can really see what's going on. Again, the trough is no longer facing forward. It's sideways, so we gotta make it like that. So we do our trough sideways. Hmm. And his lips are then pursed. So we'll have hmm. Mm hmm. We'll do the same M, but it's not going to be as elongated as the other M's. Because his lips are going to be pursed. Hmm. So now he's thinking, hmm, oh, this, is, this is very interesting. And I don't know what's going on but I'm interested to know what is going on. Okay. And then, you know, we always want to make sure to get your ear in there. And then his bushy sideburns. His, and his, his long locks. Hmm. Then you always want to kind of indicate the, the plane of the face. I like to go like this. <laughs> Just kind of, okay, that's the side of the face. So inking this really quickly, because this video is running long. So if we want to ink this real quick, and let's say the, uh, oh, the light's coming from behind him here. We're gonna leave this part here, where the light's hitting the hair, and just this first part of the hair, everything else is gonna be dark. This is a, this is a moody scene. He is uh, very inquisitive, interested. Mm -hmm. Now again, because this is very dramatic, this lighting, a lot of him is going to be dark. And you have to think about how the eyebrows protrude. The eye itself comes out in a circle. 
but the area around it is sunken because of the skull. Like this. But this side is going to be, because you have an eyeball in there, it's not going to be all dark. And the same on this side. This side is away from the light completely. So we're going to almost black this entire area out here. Same as here. Hmm. He's not sure what's going on, but he is very interested. Okay. So these are facial expressions. And we'll do another video talking about some more facial expressions, but what I really want to get down is that facial expressions aren't easy and you need to take your time, take your time, and then take your time some more. Yeah. So we get the impression of, oh, interesting. So I hope this was informative and uh, I'll talk to you guys later. Peace.